Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Oh, joy. Oh, joy. Hmm. That's all you've been doing all afternoon, sailor. Cut it out, will you? Stop sniffing. What else is there to do on the Isle of Pines but sniff? <sighs> like the camphor balls dear Aunt Emma used to keep in her hope chest. Hey, you know what happened once to Aunt Emma? She was sitting in a rocking chair love seat with her boyfriend, and just as all she... All right, was... sailor, sniff. This waiting gets you, huh? Wondering what Rhoda's doing now. Still carrying a little torch for the girl. Oh, stop eating your heart out, baby. Rhoda's a girl I once knew. Rhoda's a girl who was once beautiful. Oh, she's still beautiful. You think so, huh? Watching her on our boat this morning, I thought so. In a pale sort of way. She looks like she's dying. The way her eyes burn, the whiteness of her skin, the slow way she moves. And another thing, you heard her yourself. When she hired the bold venture to bring her here to the Isle of Pines, she said it was her last fling. What did she mean? I don't know. Maybe she... Wait a minute. Look at her, sailor. Rhoda. When I knew her, she would dance up to meet you. She looks like she hardly has the strength to walk. Hush. Hi, Rhoda. Did you have a good day? Yes. Yes, only all of a sudden I... I don't know. I, I can hardly walk. You'd better help me onto the boat, Slate. Sure. Sure, I'll carry you. Yeah, that does it. Oh. Come on, sailor. Let's get back to Havana. Aye, aye, sir. Rhoda. Yes? Here, lie down here. You said today on the Isle of Pines it was your last fling. What did you mean? 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 I'm going to die, Slate. Didn't you know? I... I'm going to die. I... I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> Doctor has a patient. He'll be up. Why, it's Slate Shannon. And with Rhoda. And with me, Mrs. Gonzalez. So I see you. Happy threesome. How charming. It's been a long time, Slate, since you've come to Rhoda's mother to ask permission to be with Rhoda. Oh, I've missed you. Rhoda's sick, Mrs. Gonzalez. Real sick. You'd better get her to a hospital, Mrs. Gonzalez. Right away. Well, I'll take care of her. Just leave her alone with me. She's had these spells before. I know just what to do. Oh, Rhoda, my poor darling. Let's go, Slate. Yeah. We'll come back to see how Rhoda's making out of it. Oh, you're always more than welcome, Slate. She'll come out of it. And uh, thank you for bringing my child back to me. You tried to get away from me, didn't you, Rhoda? And it didn't work. Your old flame was so concerned for you. He brought you right back to your dear mother. I, I just want to lie down. Somewhere where I'll never see your face, never hear your voice. Kill her! Kill her! You're dying, daughter of mine, dying just as your father died. The paleness, the wasting away, the sudden ugly tempers. And when I die, you'll go dancing, won't you, mother? Now, think about it. And Rhoda, Rhoda, you talk to Slate and that girl. What did you talk about? About me? About you, your father? You shouldn't have, Rhoda. You want them to join your dying? 
I'll think about that, too. I'm so glad you two came back this morning to see Rhoda. She's out here on the patio. Uh, Rhoda. Rhoda, dear. The slated Miss Duval are here. You're looking well this morning, Rhoda. Hold it a minute, sailor. Uh, she's asleep. What makes her look like that, Mrs. Gonzalez? Have you taken her to a doctor? Oh, she won't let us. I know it's not a lot of my business, but a long time ago, when your first husband was living, Rhoda's father, Dr. Burke, I remember when Dr. Burke looked the same way when he died. You know what my daughter says of me, don't you? She says I killed her father. She reviles me for marrying again. She screams at me that I'm a murderess. You are, Mother. Oh, Rhoda. Did you think I was sleeping? I was. My father's name awakened me. I, I was dreaming of him. She did kill him, Slate. I give you my word, the way she's killing me. Why don't you two just leave? Would you mind if I talk to your... Uh, my new husband... He's a dentist, too, you know, like my first one was. That's just dandy for the dental profession. Well, I want to talk to him. Oh, if it makes you happy. And Dr. Gonzalez is in his office. Where's his office? That room over there is Rhoda's bedroom. My father's bedroom. Yes, Dr. Burke's old bedroom. Rhoda took it when he died. The office is right next to it. Sailor, keep your eye on Rhoda. I'll see you later. <laughs> I were not so disturbed with private tragedy, Senor Shannon. Perhaps I could speak with you and pay the proper attention. On the other hand, if you wish to discuss your bicuspids... Now let's I... leave my bicuspids out of it, Doctor. You said you had your personal tragedies, like what, for instance? Uh, the theft of the tooth gold from me two days ago. Many carrots. For a dentist, this has tragedy. That makes me cry, too. What about Rhoda? Even now, there is inside, in my office, a detective sticking his nose into my drills, my instrument cabinet, swiveling up and down mm. in my beautiful chair. In such a way, he must look for clues, he says. I think I better go put my eye on him. He might... Let the man have another swivel. You talk to me about Rhoda. Uh, Rhoda? Ah, ah, see, si. pobre Sita. The poor one, she's dying. Why? You watch a lovely girl, a girl who is not of you, her stepfather, but of her mother and the first husband. You watch her, and you know she dies. Who can explain this why? When I knew Rhoda before, she was spilling over with life. It was hard for a man to keep up, she was so. I have finished in your office, senor doctor. I give it back to you. You will find the thief. You will bring back to me my gold. My patients are walking with plastic in Tell their molars. Tell them to chew gently till I find but... your... Ah, uh -huh. Senor Shannon. Do we not know each other? Yeah. Yeah, Marco. Last time we met, you were making chalk marks on my tires. But now I'm a detective, and I search for dentist gold. I come up in the world, huh? Please, please. Reminiscing is pretty, but my gold... Patience, Senor Doctor, patience. Uh, Senor Shannon, may I whisper a word with you, please? Sure. I have been whispered at all day. Out here in the hallway, Senor. You want to frisk me for gold, Marco? On the contrary, senor. I give you gold. Wisdom. You're going to tell me to get out of here, too. On the button, senor. Because you look like a picture of health. Stay that way. Especially keep away from Mildred. Mildred? You know Mrs. Gonzalez that well, huh? To me, she is Mildred. I give you gold, amigo. You did not open your ear to it. Uh, it is your life. It is your death. Adios. Hurry up, will you? When I walk on the beach at night, I don't like to hurry. Slate. Yeah, what? Just because you used to know Rhoda. Just because... Just because every time I go to help her, I get slapped in the mouth with a threat. What do you want me to do? 
Stick my head in the sand, make out like nothing's happening? Just plant your feet in the sand, Slate. That's right. Stay there. I want to talk to you. About what? About nothing. Fear likes to talk about nothing sometimes. She likes to take advantage. She finds herself in a situation like this. Moon and beach and dunes. The man she sort of likes. You want to know something, kid? Right at the moment, I can do without... <laughs> Sailor, hit the deck. You all right? Beating sand is all right, I'm all right. I'll just stay where you are. Don't move. I'll just lie there, Sailor. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to see if I'm as attractive as I was to gunfire. You're not attractive, huh? Whoever shot at us thinks he got us. Here, give me a hand. I'll help you up. Did you see who it was? In my mind. In my mind, I got a pretty good look at him. What makes you think it was Marco, Slate? He gave me a nugget of wisdom once. A guy like Marco has to prove his point. Come on, the guy at headquarters at apartment 12. He said... This is apartment 12. See? There's a one and a two, side by side. That makes it... Oh, shut up, comedian. Don't you hear that? Come on. I... I didn't... I didn't do it. Rhoda, what are you doing? I, I what swear didn't I do? didn't do it. I, I wasn't in the room. I didn't kill him. I... Marco. Marco. What is it, Slate? He's dead. Bullet tore his throat open. Mm, something in his hand. I'll... A clump of gold. Well, that's a way to die, huh, sailor? A bullet in your throat and a fistful of gold. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Uh, You will permit me this cool glass of mineral water. The hot breath of both of you has been fanning my face so long that... Keep your ears open while you sip, LaSalle. So it'll get through to your brain that Rhoda couldn't have killed Marco. Then why have I incarcerated her? Why have I had her costume in prison denims? You say to me that Senorita Rhoda could not kill, but you yourselves find her standing over my freshly murdered detective. With such a bird in my hand, why should I go beating up bushes, eh? Well, maybe you ought to do that, LaSalle. The way I hear it, your detective Marco was quite a boy for hiding behind hedges. Behind sand dunes, too. You are saying that Marco was unsavory? Marco was found dead with his gun in his holster, wasn't he? As all good policemen should die, with holsters on. Any bullets missing out of that gun? See, si. As a matter of fact, see, si. Three bullets missing. However, that Marco was one for target practice. I'm glad he didn't practice more often. He missed me. Uh, as usual, Senor Shannon, you will have to translate her for me. She means the next time you go sand crabbing near Point of Verde, look for three empty shells. They're for Marco's gun. He shot at us. Oh. Now, to answer your question, yeah, Marco was unsavory. Not only that, he was distasteful. When he was a cop on traffic detail, did you ever have him leer at you from the seat of his three-wheeler? Anyhow, you better get his killer, LaSalle, or your force might come down with an epidemic of that stuff. I have his murderer, the girl Rhoda. She can give me no reason for being with Mark. I'll find a reason. Don't forget Rhoda's dying. She's being killed. She has wet my shoulder with tears of this story also, Senor Shannon. 
How her mother attempts to kill her. How her mother killed her father, the dentist, Dr. Burke. How she... Maybe her mother did. We've seen her. Talk to her. And on this, you base such violent accusation? You should blush. No, Senorita Duval. The painless dentist, Dr. Burke, died of leukemia. Our medical examiner established it so. Because we also were curious of the manner of his death. And that leaves Rhoda. With her future plan for her in my prison. Why do you disturb... Ah, Senora Gonzalez. Please to come in. Oh, thank you. Senor LaSalle, I've come to... You know Shannon and the Senorita Duval. They wish also to convince me that your daughter did not kill. Now, I know them, and I'm grateful to them. Uh, Senor LaSalle, my lawyer's gotten me a writ ordering you to release Rhoda into my custody. Hmm? She should be at home for her life. Permit me days. to observe this writ. Gracias. Hmm. It is in order. The girl will be released to you. Hmm. But I caution, Senora, do not let her slip from your motherly fingers. <laughs> On the Isle of Pines For a girl so young Whose beauty declines The girl who sighed For very last fling Before death to her His song does sing And everywhere This girl she goes Death follow close Like bell on her toes Her father first Then detective man After shooting bullets From dunes of sand you through, King? My wish was to... And my wish is for you to leave it alone, clear? Big time operator. You got hold of a low price grief and you can't let it go, huh? You have to stick around and be shot at. One of these days you're not going to recover from it. Well, there must be other places in Havana you could spoil, sailor. Why don't you go spoil one? So Rhoda's dying. Let's concede the point. And her father's dead. And Marco's dead. Let's bunch them all together and make a bouquet out of them, Slate. You want to wake? Let's have a big one while we're at it. I never busted you one before. Now seems a good time. Do it. Maybe it'll bring you two. Maybe it'll make you remember the kind of man you really are. I wouldn't know about that. You tell me. The kind of man who can take gold out of a dead man's hand and not tell the police about it. The kind of man who tears a girl apart. Go on, bust me one, Slate. I deserve it. Come here. Closer. You going to hit me? I want to whisper to you why I kept the gold. So I can trade it back to Dennis Gonzalez for a few answers. You want to come along? Let me compliment you, senor, senorita. Where did you find my gold? You're not going to believe this, senor dentist. But it was wrapped inside a dead man's hand. Uh, what are you saying? Pay attention when Sailor talks to you. A dead man had it, a man named Marco. What's happening around here that a man named Marco takes a few shots at me and dies for oh, it? Oh, you are making of this business of petty theft something that it is not. You are... And you pay attention to Slate, too. He said Marco, and you didn't do a thing. I did a thing. I raised an eyebrow. However slightly, I raised it, senorita. Uh-huh. And one more thing, my dentist friend. If Mildred were my wife... Uh, you are confusing the trend of the conversation. What has my wife to do with it? Maybe you ought to ask her. I'd take a little time off from scrubbing dentures and ask her how well she knew Marco. Wouldn't you do that, Slate? Yeah, I would. I'd cross my arms over my chest and jut out my jaw and say, Mildred, what's going on? What is it with you and Marco? Uh, you see, sailor, look. Man's eyebrows just did it again. Excuse me. I think you gave the man something to worry about, Slate. It took a man's murder to convince you, didn't it? To convince me to do what? That I was right all the time, that I had a reason to be bothered about Rhoda. That there's something wrong in this house, something evil, something... Come on, sailor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's dead, all right. What happened? Dead. Dead. Rhoda, look at him. He's dead. Everything dies that you touch. 
Oh, my God, an evil... Rhoda. Rhoda, Rhoda. Rhoda, cut it out. There. That's better. Now, tell me what happened. I was in my room. I heard the shot. I, I came here. Oh, I wouldn't believe her. My daughter's mad. Maybe she killed him. She didn't kill him. Look, powder burns, the attitude of his body, the gun in his hand. She killed him. <gasps> you! You! You killed him, Mother. When am I going to die? Suicide. You think so, LaSalle? On this, I would bet my bottom peso. Dr. Gonzalez killed himself because he could not stand the inkling that you bothered him with. The thought of his wife and another man. Like you said, Slate just inklinged him, LaSalle. He just suggested that Mildred and Marco were seeing each other. Hmm. Since when does a man put a bullet in his brain for something as flimsy as that? Since when? You do not understand, Cuban gentlemen, senorita. If someone told me that my senora was making flutters with a caballero of the opposite sex, I would... Now, let's leave your personal life out of this, LaSalle. You still think Dr. Gonzalez was a suicide, huh? Officially so. I have so stamped it on the file. Well, get out your eraser, LaSalle. That file's going to be changed to murder. It's two o'clock in the morning, Slate. What are we hanging around the Gonzalez home for? It goes like this. Go on the premise that Mildred's first husband, Dr. Burke, was murdered. I'll go on any premise you want me to, Slate. Okay. Dr. Burke murdered because Mildred wanted him out of the way so she could marry Gonzalez. So she married him, so? Then there's Marco. Also murdered. Also murdered. You know why? Blackmail, huh? Marco was collecting. The theory says Marco was bleeding Mildred because he knew she killed Rhoda's father. Oh, and Marco thought we were getting too close and shot at us. Yeah, and I'll tell you some more. I figure after a while, Mildred ran out of money. Mm, that can be worrisome. It's happened to us. She tried to pay Marco with gold, a couple of hundred bucks worth she lifted from Dentist Gonzalez. Marco sneered at it. Mildred killed him. Gonzalez suspected. She killed him, too. A promise, huh? Then what was Rhoda doing with Marco? Marco was seeing her mother. Rhoda wanted to find out why. She found him dead. Mm, and got blamed for the murder. Why doesn't Rhoda let it go at that? Because maybe one day somebody will believe, Rhoda, that Mildred killed Dr. Burke. I hate to break the news to you, Slate, but it's a lousy theory. Dr. Burke died of leukemia. LaSalle told us. LaSalle said... Taylor. Taylor, look, the light just went on in Gonzalez's office. Come on. Here. Here, this French window. Can you see through the curtains? Mildred's in there. Yeah. Yeah, look what she's doing. She must be off her rocker, Slate. What is she doing with that X-ray machine? X-raying the walls? That, sailor, is a lesson on how to poison somebody without leaving a trace of how it was done. Continuous X-raying will cause leukemia. What? Yeah. You're watching a murder being committed. I still don't get it. X-rays will go through eight feet of concrete. Rhoda's sleeping on the other side of that wall in the same room her father slept. Watch out for the flying glass, sailor. of this breaking it one side honey i said get away from that machine have you gone crazy yeah yeah it looks better lying on the floor like that oh that machine cost thousands. that machine was killing rhoda oh you're both crazy you don't know what you're saying some premise huh sailor dr burke died of leukemia all right and this is what did it to him and this is what's doing it to rhoda how come you killed Gonzalez with a gun, dear? Were you in a rapid mood? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Five will get you eight that you can't. Rhoda. Rhoda, tell them. Tell them. Tell them what? What they already know? That you murdered my father and my stepfather and Marco and me? Tell them that? Rhoda. Sailor, call the Sal. And go home. I'll meet you there. <laughs> Oh, 
joy, oh joy, oh joy. Hmm. You're doing it again, sailor. Why don't you bring me back to the Isle of Pines for? You know there's nothing else to do here but sniff. I'm not sniffing. Well, then you're not having any fun. We come to one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean, and you say fun is sniffing pine needles? Oh, sailor, you need therapy. Did you bring some? Yeah. Come here. Like that? Mm, more therapy, please. All right. More therapy, doctor. I'll be a raving idiot in no time at all. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.